Yes, the dating path is strewn with countless fresh hells. But your search for love can also bring you real joy and heal your life. The key? It's learning how to tune into your own inner guidance whispers. In this episode, I'll teach you three processes to help you do exactly that. And they will speed, ease, and deepen your path to finding healthy love. So stay tuned. If you've ever been disillusioned, disappointed, or discouraged in your search for love, and you know there has to be a better way to find the healthy, soul-filling love you've always longed for, then you've discovered the podcast for you. I know, as Ken's work personally has led me to find the love of my life. So here's your host of Deeper Dating, Ken Page. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Deeper Dating Podcast. I'm Ken Page, and I'm a psychotherapist, the author of the best-selling book, Deeper Dating, and the co-founder of DeeperDating.com, a new site where people can meet each other in an online environment that's inspiring, safe, and positive. Today, and in the next episode, I'm going to talk about how to make your search for love into a true adventure of growth, and yes, even a joyful experience at times. So in this episode and in every episode, I share the greatest tools that I know to help you find love and keep it flourishing and heal your life in the process because the skills of dating are nothing more than the skills of love. And those are the greatest skills of all for a happy and meaningful life. And if you want to learn more about the Deeper Dating Path to Real Intimacy, just go to deeperdatingpodcast.com. And if you sign up for my mailing list, you'll get lots of free information, some free gifts, and you'll learn much more about how to use these ideas to transform your own intimacy journey. And you'll also find complete transcripts of this and every other episode. I also just want to say that everything I share on this podcast is educational in nature. It is not medical or psychiatric advice or treatment. And finally, if you like what you hear here, I'd love it if you could subscribe on iTunes or elsewhere and even leave me a review. People have left the most beautiful reviews and it means the world to me. So thank you so much for that. And let's jump in. So as I say in the intro, the world of dating is strewn with endless fresh hells. I know that. I have lived that. But it's also true that your search for love can bring you joy and meaning and growth in many different ways. It actually can be one of the greatest spiritual adventures of your entire life. And it should be. You should be growing and healing as you're looking for love. Because if not, you're missing the fun, you are missing the adventure, you're missing the growth, and you're missing a whole amazing set of skills of intimacy that you're going to need not just to find a relationship, but to keep your future relationship alive and fresh. So you may be thinking that I'm out of my mind using words like joy and adventure and fun. And trust me, I have spent decades dating And I know the pain, I know the loneliness, I know the head-banging frustration, I know all of that so well. But when we listen to our inner guidance and we learn our lessons about intimacy as we date, there really is beauty and joy that starts to happen. We feel stronger, we feel clearer, we make different choices and we see different things happening. And really, truly, those are great joys. So this episode and what I'm going to encourage you to do is going to be, at times, fun, joyful, and exciting. Because I know that dating is hard. But when you have moments where there's an illumination and you go, oh, I didn't know that about myself, or wow, I was shutting a door when I thought I was just doing the right thing, or oh, this is the next loving act, or 20 million other possible revelations. When there are those kind of epiphanies, when there's a sense of growth and inner healing, it just makes the slog so much more bearable and Truly, 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 it opens your life in profound ways, which is why I consider this like a sacred journey. 
And clearly, it's one of the most important missions of our entire adult lives. And because of that, on some level, we're equipped with an incredibly refined set of tools and skills and capacities, a lot of which are kind of underground and hidden, that help us and support us in our journey or hinder us. But still, in any case, even if there are protective mechanisms that hinder us, they're still built with incredible refinement. Some examples of this, and this is in the animal kingdom, but it just kind of captures the sensitivity of the kind of equipment for this mating process that we are gifted with. So the silkworm moth can actually smell, can scent out one silkworm moth a mile away of the opposite sex for mating. A mile away, one silkworm. That's kind of the exquisite, wild level of mating capacity, ability to find someone, that to find another moth that they have. An example in the human species is finding the same type of pattern person again and again and again. That's not a happy thing, but necessarily, but it's not nothing. It's because how we are wired ends up affecting who we attract and who we are attracted to in ways that are kind of way beyond the mind. Or another thing which I have seen happen so many times, maybe you've experienced this too in your own life. I know that as a coach and a psychotherapist and in my own personal life, I've seen this and it's kind of amazing to me. You have a breakthrough something opens up, you admit something, you deal with something. And when you make that shift, new things start to happen. So for example, in your dating life, you start drinking less or not at all. And you find that your behavior shifts and the kind of people you're meeting shift. In the work that I do, in the work that I teach, as people discover their core gifts, their deepest qualities of vulnerability and passion, which often we think we need to push aside. And they learn to embrace those qualities, the kind of people they're attracted to and the kind of people that they attract change in positive ways. This is kind of miraculous, but it's another example of a kind of like almost mystical level of effect as we grow that leads to growth and change in our dating life. And the converse as well. When we push back growth or deny growth or avoid intimacy, we repeat the same painful patterns again and again. So this episode is going to be about how you can tap into that magic and turn your dating life and your search for love into something that truly feels like an adventure of growth, a spiritual adventure, with real moments of joy and gratification, not just when you meet that special someone, but when you realize that you are really growing in positive ways. So before I share, what I'm going to do is in this episode, I'm going to share three different practices. And each of those practices is a revelatory experience. Each of those practices will help you Discover your intimacy lessons, learn those lessons, make shifts in your life, and deepen and enrich who you are, the way you live, your spiritual journey, and your personal growth journey. Really, really, truly. And, of course, change the way that you date, change your dating experience, create healing, and most important of all is lead you quicker and easier and more directly to the wonderful relationship that you're looking for. So I'm going to share these three processes in this episode. And in the next episode, we're going to talk about guiding insights, what to do with the whispers of wisdom that you will get from doing these practices, how to hold them, how to work with them. We'll talk about that in part two of this two-part series. Because that's what's going to happen when you do these practices. You're going to start getting whispers of your own personal distilled wisdom. And that is fun. But before diving in and teaching you these three practices, which you can even like pause and do as we go along, you can do all three. They're really pretty quick processes. 
but I just want to give a caveat first. It's almost impossible to change deeply ingrained habits. I think something like 5% of people who try to change a deeply ingrained and important habit are able to do that for the long haul. And the key ingredients, and this is something I talk about a lot, that determine those 5% that are able to hold and create real change are this. Essentially, that they have a template that makes sense to them that they can follow, that maybe makes more sense than their own kind of fitful and defense-based efforts that they've created. So one is to find a template that really has wisdom for you in your search for love. And the other is to have a person or a community with whom you can fail and rewire and get up again and try and experiment and explore again and again and again. This is one of the most few missions of your life will affect the rest of your life more than this one. So it's worth that time and that space. That is why in my book, in my online course, in my Deeper Dating Intensive, which if you're interested in is a six-month deep journey, the next one is going to be led by me. The next one is going to begin in the summer, but I'll be interviewing starting in a few months. For that, you can just go to deeperdatingintensive.com to set up a free time to speak with me. Anyway, all of that is because I believe and I teach again and again, get a learning partner. Don't do it alone. Find a community, find a group, because otherwise our ingrained patterns lead us back to the same places. Okay, so I know that was a heck of a preamble, So now I'm going to teach you these three beautiful processes. The first one is a process of asking for guidance. Now, maybe you will like one of these. Maybe you will like two. Maybe you will like all three. Maybe you won't like any of them. But that's okay because you'll get ideas to create your own kind of practice just by listening. But go with the ideas that really instinctively feel worthwhile, juicy, and valuable to you. Don't do any others. People spend way too much time doing spiritual practices that are like boring for extended periods of time. I know boring is part of a spiritual practice, but it should not be all of it. There should be fun and joy and meaning and inspiration and periods of illumination. Otherwise, probably you got the wrong practice. So, okay. The first practice that I'm going to teach is one of asking. So, if you believe in a higher power, or if you think that there's like some kind of mystery in the universe that you can tap into, or maybe you believe that you have like an innate lot of powers, maybe it's just the universe itself. But if there is kind of an object that you can ask for help from, that you can ask to tap into the resources of that. For me, it's my higher power. I use the word God, too, or goddess. That may work for you. It may not work for you. Stick with me, stick with me, stick with me. If there is something that you can kind of feel that you can tap into in that way, what you do is you craft an ask. You find words asking for help in your search for love, but they're not flat words. They're not typical words. They're not formulaic words. They're words that come out of your own heart or touch your own heart. Words that really speak your language. And it can just be the words, help me, or help me find love, or help me learn my lessons of love. I have a spiritual teacher ever since I was a teenager whose name is Paramahansa Yogananda. He wrote a book called Autobiography of a Yogi, and he had a prayer. And I used this prayer every day. And the prayer was this, God, bless me that I choose my life companion based on your ways of perfect soul unity. That was really helpful to me because I thought, wait, that's not how you choose a partner. You choose a partner because you're really attracted to them and they're really attracted to you. And then that soul unity stuff comes later. I learned from that beautiful prayer that I would say again and again that, in fact, it works the opposite way. Of course, you have to be mutually attracted. But when you start with looking for qualities of soul unity, your entire search changes. Why does nobody teach us this? Why do so few people teach us this? But it's a precious, precious lesson. So that was one that I used. 
So the first step is to craft words that really touch your heart, that speak to you, that move you, that inspire you. Maybe they cause an ache and a longing, but that's a sacred ache and longing. That longing for a relationship is not something that needs to be suppressed. It's the fire of that longing is a treasure. It's the rocket fuel that gets you out of the gravity zone of self-involvement and moves you toward being able to find and be in a relationship. So words that evoke longing, words that evoke hope, words that are just a deep kind of wrenching ask. Craft the words that speak to you. And then this is my suggestion that you use a kind of very ancient contemplative prayer practice, which is very, very simple, very beautiful. So you might even want to pause the recording right now and just craft a sentence or a phrase or an ask of some sort. Now, once you have those words, here's what you do next. You say the words, you feel their effect, and it's like a wave. You might have a wave of emotion, a wave of longing, a wave of sadness, a wave of joy, a wave of hope. You ride that full wave till it finishes, and then you say it again. And if you're anything like me, trust me, you are going to be thinking about your to-do list and annoying things you still have to do and whatever. Your mind will go. There'll be times that you're really focused on other things. Don't worry about it. Just let that pass. Come back to it. And even if only a small portion of this practice, and I recommend five minutes, and then if you can, working your way up to 10 minutes a day you will see profound change. You really, really will. So in that time, if there's just some short periods where your heart is deeply engaged in this process, you are doing great and you will experience change. So that's one practice. It's this practice of asking. Now, maybe for you, asking is not going to be what you want to do. Like maybe you want to say an affirmation and that's fine too. As long as it's not one that you force, as long as it's one that moves you, touches your heart, quickens your heart, and feels like it has authenticity and truth to you, then you can do the same thing with an affirmation. Okay, here's another process. It's the process of calling out. Because if you think about it, your partner or potential partner's exist in this world, on this planet. And they're looking for someone like you. They're looking for a home with someone like you. You have not met yet. Or maybe if you've met, you weren't in the right places. But it's kind of an awesome thing to think about. Like, they're there. They're there. Somewhere they're there. You haven't found them yet. You haven't met them yet. But they're there. And they're looking for someone like you. That's just an amazing thing to think about. So a friend of mine had a prayer that he did, which helped him find a relationship. And the prayer was, he would just picture this person and he would say the words, my beloved, I open my heart to you. And he would picture them and he would maybe say like, I'm here, I'm waiting to find you. I'm looking for you. I'm opening my heart to you. And it's a kind of calling out. Very emotional and beautiful process. And I think it really like generates something very powerful. So you might want to pause the recording and just do that now for a few minutes. Again, five minutes a day, working up to 10 minutes a day if you can. Because the thing about these practices are they're not flat. They have heat. They even burn a little. They make you feel things. Yes, sometimes they're boring, but sometimes they're really not. And they're fierce. They're powerful. They tap right into the longing place. So the heat that's generated is not always easy, but it's really worth it because that heat is changing your field. So the third practice is one that is incredibly precious to me. I've done it for many years. I do it pretty much every day. I have friends that do it too, and we share our experiences with it on a regular basis. I can't tell you how much I love this process. I teach it everywhere. It's not in my book because I hadn't learned it yet or 
created it yet at that point, but it's kind of everywhere else. And if you like it and you'd like to do it in a deeper, richer way, just go to episode three, because I spend the entire episode on teaching the inner mentor process. So I'm going to guide you through it right now, and it's going to be a shortened version. So if you can, close your eyes. If you can't, you don't need to, but this will take your focus, so be very careful if you're driving. You might want to wait. I want you to remember a time that you felt full of an innate sense of love. Not a time that when you think about it, it makes you sad now to think about. A time that you can still feel good when you think about it. But a time that you felt filled with love. There was just a lot of love in your heart. It doesn't have to be romantic. It could be anything. It could be with a pet. It could be in nature. Anywhere. Just remember that you. And just hold that memory in a gentle way. And then see if you can remember a time that you learned something about love. You learned something that made you be a little kinder, a little wiser, open your heart a little bit more, or maybe even just like someone who inspired you because of how they love and how that person changed you and touched you and affected you. And just remember that. And now I'd like you to imagine a you that has that love, has that like wisdom about intimacy, but full on like wings unfolded, like the you that you are meant to be, a you kind of beyond fear with the courage to live from this loving place. It's just an imagination exercise. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to get there. Just imagine that you what your face looks like, what your eyes look like, what it's like to be that you. Just imagine that you. And now I'd like you to imagine stepping into that you. Again, it's fantasy. You don't have to earn this. You don't have to be there. But in a way, you know this because it's you. So just imagine walking into, stepping into this you who is like essence of unfolded you. Now you're behind the eyes of that you. You're inside the body of that you. You're feeling in the heart of that you. And look at the you of today listening to this episode. And if you want, take a minute and pause and call out guidance to that you to help that you, the you of today, move closer to this place, the place where you, the inner mentor, live. See what guidance comes out. Don't think about it. It's not going to be shoulds. From this beautiful place of love, just call out whatever advice or guidance comes out. So do that right now and feel free to pause the recording. So whatever that advice was that you got, my suggestion to you for your practice is to just love it. Just love the advice. You don't have to like fight too hard to remember it or do it. Just hold the advice to your heart. Now, what's going to happen if you do this exercise regularly is you're going to get tons of wise guidance from a very wonderful source. Second, you bypass your inner critic usually when you do this. So that's an amazing kind of empowerment thing right there. For me, bypassing my inner critic is a big deal. The third thing that happens is the more you do this, the more you become more like that inner mentor. And that's kind of the most fabulous thing of all. So these are three practices. Five minutes a day, work up to 10 if you want. If you can't, stay with five. Watch what happens. Please comment and let me know. But there will be shifts and you are going to begin to get bits of distilled personal essence wisdom for your journey. And that's going to make this into truly an unbelievably precious and valuable and even memorable adventure. And in our next episode, we'll talk about what to do with that wisdom, these guiding insights as they come up. So thank you for listening. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. And Please feel free to go to deeperdatingpodcast.com and sign up for my mailing list if you like. Thank you. And that's it for today's episode of Deeper Dating. Be sure to go to deeperdatingpodcast.com as Ken has a few more gifts for you. Then join us 
on the next episode.